This is the final example I'll do in uh, differentiating vector functions with examples from particle paths. And I want to do at least one 3D example, and for that I've chosen the helix, given with this parameterization, and here with this, the sketch of the helix. And we know from, from just sketching parameterized curves that uh, three dimensions can be somewhat challenging, and putting on uh, velocity and acceleration vectors can be perhaps even more so, but um, I wanted to do one example, and so let's just do it. Let's co compute the velocity, speed, etc. So we can differentiate this. Very familiar now. Minus sine t, cosine t, k. The speed now is sine squared plus cosine squared plus k squared square root to say it's 1 plus k squared square root. And uh, I think the important thing here is that it is in fact constant. So the speed is not varying along the path. And then we have the acceleration. Differentiate one more time and we get minus cosine squared, I mean, excuse me, minus cosine, minus sine, and zero. So there's no component of acceleration that direction. In principle, then I would like to plot some of those vectors uh, in this diagram. What I think I'll do first is, uh, as with sketching, it's nice to look in certain uh, two-dimensional projections first and see what uh, what one has. And I've pre-drawn some, some sketches here. So let's look at this one first. It's the easier of the two. Um, Again, what you should uh, interpret this is this would be what you see in looking at this helix from straight down uh, the z-axis. And so I'll label that as the y-coordinate and the x-coordinate. And uh, as we've already seen, or as you can see from here, that's a circular motion in this uh, projection. So I'll indicate that. And these velocity vectors, uh, the, the x and y components, or this of the velocity and of the acceleration or what we saw in the very first example of the circular motion. So let's just jump right to it and, uh, and plot some of those. In this case they have length, uh, unit length. Just draw them, a few of them. Uh, or I should say the velocity vector, as I'm drawing them, these velocity vectors do not have unit length in three dimensions. They have this length. But uh, in the two-dimensional, um, the two-dimensional projection of those velocity vectors uh, do have unit length. So there's a third component uh, in the z direction, and the acceleration, which we have here, which is entirely in the x y direction. There's no component in the z direction. Again, it has unit length pointing towards the origin, and uh, I've drawn those in bold uh, orange in the past. I'll continue doing that. Maybe we'll just draw two. Okay, and those are the acceleration vectors. Let me go on to 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 this projection. Uh, again, this would be the y-axis, and this would be z. So this is what you would see. Excuse me. This is what you would see if you were looking straight down the the, the x-axis at this at this helix. You would see this. And I should say, just to remind you, how would you know that? So hopefully, you're familiar with this now. If you just look at this, this is a case where this is y and this is z. And if you solve um, solve for t in terms of z and the plug in here, you'll get that y is equal to sine of t, but t is uh, z over k. And that's what this curve is. And this period, this spatial period, is when z is equal to 2 pi k. So um, the curve looks, it's sinusoidal, it's, it's exactly a sine wave, and its period is 2 pi k. Now, this case, and let me just go ahead and draw the, uh, the, the particle is moving up here. This is exactly, modulo a change of uh, coordinates, uh, the, the case we previously did of the, of the sinusoidal oscillating particle. I must plot some velocity vectors. They aren't constant uh, anymore in this projection. Um, they vary. Uh, let's put them on here. I should have worked out what the length is. Let's see, uh, when you're at the top here, the length is k, that I know. 
when you're at the bottom here, the length must be 1 plus uh, k squared square root. You know, uh, I'm not really indicating that they're varying. It's longer here and shorter here. And there we go. And the, uh, the acceleration vector, again, it has no component in the z direction. It does have a component in the y direction, which is uh, this minus sign. Again, we did it in the previous example, so let's just draw it on here. The acceleration vector is looking like this, pointing inwards. And let me just say, this acceleration vector that I'm drawing here is the same vector as that it was drawn here. It's just uh, looking at it from a different, uh, a different vantage point. It's the acceleration vector that goes uh, inward to the center of the circle. So that's then the information, and one can then attempt to draw some of this on this figure. I think I'll just uh, I'll stick mostly with the velocity vectors. So they have a fixed component in the z direction, and then they're going to vary. So they're going upwards. Oh, sorry about that. But my sketch actually isn't so good to be able to indicate that. Uh, so I guess you can learn from this that probably one doesn't expect too much sketching vectors in three dimensions. Anyway, uh, there are these velocity vectors and they go, see this one's really difficult to draw, let's not even do it. Anyway, they, they're always tangent to the curve and it goes circling around here and I will draw one or maybe two acceleration vectors and they're pointing radially inward. They're actually easy to do, at least at certain points along this curve. So there you go, that's a um, a little bit of uh, advice about how to how about to sketch subject curves. I think the main point is get used to differentiating. Get used to doing these calculations. Do them quickly. Do them accurately, and um, and I think you'll do well in the problems.